Christy, uh, any more thought? I, at least you've come up on the screen. Yeah, actually, uh, I, I like the idea of gaming, like where, because some, especially I know Matthew in particular, and, and um, others too, that I think it, that could really help with like comprehension in, in the work of uh, like forest, you know, with Amazon or so. And uh, I don't know if that's actually a statement I'm making, but the, um, one question uh, I meant to say, like um, so far during this COVID-19, um, how has each person like have dealt with the, like anxiety? Like, so this is probably past, but I mean, how, how have you been handling with the like COVID-19, especially taking on such a big role as bosses and um, it must be really, you know, stressful. That's, that's a really interesting question, Stacey. Um, yeah, yeah. One that I actually don't get very often because we're so focused on, on, as Eric said, our yeah. customers and how they're managing in this. I don't think we look at ourselves very much. Sure. Uh, I think two things that have been very important for me is setting up mm -hmm. a home office area, um, not just working, you know, from the couch, but having like a designated area. Mm -hmm. And this is going to come off as a joke, but I promise for me, it has been very important. Pants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually putting on pants and not pajama bottoms gets me like into the, okay, this is work time versus leisure time. So that has been really big. And I think self-care has definitely become much more important during this time than it was for me even before. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it is exactly. I've heard from, from some researchers that Zoom actually does make you more tired. Uh, but you've got the stress of uncertainty in the world, the stress of uncertainty about what's happening in employment. And it's a lot. <laughs> so mm -hmm. just taking days when I forgive myself. And I say, you know what? Netflix binge day. That's just what it's going to be. And that's okay. Well, that's good. You take time for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's really the only question I have. I, I, I um, the, the slideshow, you know, I found it all really amazing and interesting. So I wanted to thank you guys for uh, sharing. Excellent. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, Kristen, Eric, are there any questions that you'd like either Will or, or me to ask you at this point that we haven't covered? You guys did a good job asking questions. There was, it was a really good range. Uh, one of the things I wanted to make sure you guys had was the hub. And I had nothing to do with the hub. I'm just delivering that. I mean, <laughs> but I was like, I really wanted you guys to know about that. Um, I'm really glad you asked that question about Amazon. That was Thank a really you. good question about Amazon. Um, I, I think this, you know, it, you know, with the COVID and all that stuff, it did change things. And I think it was a really good idea to, you know, even have us come here and talk about employment when everybody's at home and people are like un insecure and not sure about their jobs. Um, it's, it's a good time to ask about employment. Um, and like Krista said, we are happy to report that, you know, we actually see growth and potential for growth and potential for new positions. And, you know, and I like that. I, I like that. I, you know, asking that question, that was a really good question about asking about remote working for some of these employees, because that is not something we've done before like gone to an agency, you know, gone to a company and say, yeah, we got these people that can work remote. Um, there's a lot of opportunities in that for um, people because the uh, being in a, a, a social setting is sometimes really hard and it's hard to, to do things like that and to be able to, you know, have a home office and if somebody needs support, even be able to have private support. Um, yeah, I, I like that. that was a really good question. So your questions are, are planting seeds. So. Good. I Thank hope you. they do not grow weeds. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would, I would actually love to, if we could insert just one question, which is for any of your, and I see Stacey, you have one too. Um, but if any of your listeners are looking for resources, so if they are interested in employment, where could they go uh, to learn more and learn what's available to them? That's sort of our standard closing question. How have you been using this new resource to play a part in, in the ARCs? programming during the pandemic? Um, well, well, there's a lot of resources out there that are available um, to many different individuals. Like Eric said, one is The Hub, which 
Um, I have used myself for the Zumba classes and other fun like that. Um, that's been a really helpful resource. You can also go to the ARC SF regular website. So just the arcsf.org. And that's where you can find out about a lot of the programming that we still do offer. Um, for any of your listeners that are out there that are looking for resources, again, we have the ARC website, but I would highly recommend looking into uh, Golden Gate Regional Center or Department of Rehabilitation. Um, those are both state and, and area funded resources. Um, they can refer you to many different uh, service providers and different funding options to help, oh goodness, with just about anything that you can imagine in general and specific to COVID relief. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I, and can I add to that a little bit? So what, and so, you know, one of the things that Krista has done really good about is she's got the team to build up ideas and with, with old ideas and new ideas. And Krista and James have gone to the Department of Rehab and the Regional Center and had, well, they didn't go there, but they had big Zoom meetings and presentations. So they're letting the Regional Centers know and the Department of Rehabs all over the Bay Area that we're still hiring. We didn't stop working. Our coach, our, our, the, the, our, our, our customers never stopped. We never stopped, we ramped up. And so Krista is informing the Department of Rehab and the regional centers everywhere that we're still hiring. So when, con when, when consumers go to them and say, I want a job, they're not saying, oh, it's you know shelter in place, there's nothing happening. They actually can say, yeah, the ARC's hiring. <laughs> so I don't think, I know, I know that there's not a lot of agencies. I'm also, background, I'm my uncle's conservator. I'm in this, you know, like Krista, my uncle is, is why I'm here. So he's still not working right now. He's been off for a while. So that's one of the things that Krista has been doing with the resources is going out and letting people know we're still hiring. We still have support. We're still doing things. I want to thank uh, you, Krista Preston, Associate Director of Employment Services, and you, Eric Harvey, Employment Services Manager of the ARC, for spending a very valuable amount of time with us. Uh, mm -hmm. You folks are fighting the good fight for the people who probably are among the most need of help. Uh, please keep up the great work. Uh, and uh, I know we'll be hearing more from you again. And until then, stay safe and stay well. Thank you. Thank you. And you too, everybody. Uh, be safe and, and, and keep your family and friends safe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. Protect each other. We'll now hear from Jennifer Brooks, our book correspondent. Thank you, Keith. Today, I would like to tell you about The Good Gut by two Stanford professors a husband and wife team named Justin Sonnenberg and his wife, Erica Sonnenberg, both with PhDs. And this book is all about the bacteria that live inside human intestines. And there actually is a suspected connection between those gut bacteria and a whole bunch of different psychological, psychiatric, and neurological disorders, including autism, which they discuss beginning on page 152 of their book. Yes, it talks about several studies that have been done all in mice, unfortunately, not people. So. Yes, they've discovered that in mice, at least, if you, they're missing a certain species of bacteria in their guts, those mice show ASD-like symptoms. And of course, research needs to be done in humans to see if this holds up. But yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting question. And I hope they do do the research in people 
to determine. I mean, it would be nice to think that maybe at some point in the near future, although even if it happened tomorrow, it would be generations too late that you could get some sort of probiotic supplement and that would not get rid of the autism, but make it easier for those people to get along in society. It's a hope. We need all the hope we can get during these times. I would like to tell you about the book, Loud Hands. Autistic People Speaking. This is an anthology that was published several years ago by ASAN, the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. And just to give you a tiny sampling of what this book has to offer, they invited many people on the autism spectrum to write about their experiences and the contributions include everything from poems to essays. So I'd like to read you a short poem. This is called I Hid by a woman named Alyssa Zisk. I knew. I knew what I was, what I still am. I say what because so many of you see. Well, that as a what, not a who. So I hid. I hid because I knew. I knew what would happen if anyone found out. I knew that if anyone who could diagnose me, who could label me, ever got near me, the game would be up in a moment. I knew what they did with kids like me, with the autistic kids. We didn't take hard classes. We didn't even take normal classes. What we could do was ignored to make the time to get us the abuses we needed. But it wasn't called abuse. If you're autistic, it's therapy, in quotes. So I hid. I passed. Not for normal, of course. I could never have done that. But I could pass for merely weird, as long as I avoided the people who thought they were helping. If you're just weird, you can take whatever classes you want. If you're just weird, no one bats an eye when you have two pairs of... Um, pliers in your bag. If you're just weird, you can spend a month in another country. All that's okay, as long as you're just weird, not autistic. So I hid. I had quiet hands, and no one even had to hold them down. If no one knows you move like an autistic, you don't, right? I looked at people's foreheads. No one notices you're not looking them in the eye if you look at their foreheads. I made sure my teachers knew I was smart. The top of the class can't be autistic, right? I was hiding. But someone noticed anyways. By then, I was in high school. In high school, it's hard, harder to make you do anything, unless you're already not quite human. They have to convince your parents to force the issue if you don't want to be evaluated. Who's going to convince parents who went through life with the picture of autism most of us still have? The kid in the corner who doesn't talk or look you in the eye, who bangs his head on the wall. He's autistic. The girl who's doing her best to pass for merely weird, who flaps her hands when excited, not autistic. Hiding was working, not going was working. I kept hiding because I knew. I knew that even in high school, that label would give them too much power. I knew that the autistic needed to be made normal in ways the merely weird could escape. I knew that we were somehow broken and needed fixing. I didn't want to be fixed. I kept hiding. The problem is hiding yourself is hard. Maybe some people can do it forever. I can't. All the problems are still there and I'm terrified. I'm terrified because I still know. I know I'll be an object of pity. I know that some people will still see me as less human. I know those same people will see me as broken. I know they'll try to break the person I am in order to fix the person I never was. I know they'll think I'm trapped in the shell of autism, not the shell of normalcy they want to force me into. I know I'll be too autistic to understand, except when I'm not autistic enough. I know I'll be ignored, but I also know that nothing will change unless we make it change, and those same people won't. So I know that I have to do it. I guess I can't hide anymore. Or park like in Mountain View, but you know, now things are more virtual. You can, you know, go to their um, uh, page on Facebook and um, sh I'm sure, you know, I have to like and follow it like first, read about it first. Um, but it seems very like promising and multi-generational and 
is sensory friendly and they host performers uh, on the um, Magical Bridge uh, Facebook page. And so, uh, at, so it's noon Pacific time uh, to participate and it's a, uh, nope, that's a different thing. Um, anyhow, so um, there, you can also call, the, you know, just check up on them at 650-380-1557. The second thing, uh, every Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. is a Dream Achievers Band. Um, they do, um, they've done a lot of, uh, they've done a lot of uh, events in the past. They, the recent thing they did was a Father's Day um, celebration where they um, did concerts and they bring musical joy while in, especially in difficult times and and they you know continue to you know proceed on these things as you know but with proper social distancing and um, so yeah these are two pages to look up on Facebook um, I know some of our members I could tell uh, like and follow Dream Achievers Band so um, they, they did a lot, especially during, uh, during the World Autism Month. So, um, oh, and they have a number two, which is 510-468-9797. And that's pretty much it for today. And everybody uh, continues staying safe and healthy out there. And see you next time. Hello. I would like to make an addition to the cultural report um, that I made just a while ago. Um, the ARC Hub of SF.org, they um, are having remote learning of Zoom, summer Zoom classes. And you could sign up for free, get your free Zoom account at zoom.us. Um, mornings and afternoons, they uh, We'll be having all kinds of subjects on COVID-19, art, writing, exercise, uh, cooking, recreation, wellness, technology, advocacy, and workforce. So um, those are all types of um, activities that the ARC is providing. And go to their website and you know, every day just to check. And you can always call one of the staff members that I believe their email addresses and phone numbers are on the site too at um, thearcofsf.org or the arc hub of sf.org. Next, um, Wednesday, July 22nd at 5 p.m. Pacific time, um, Facebook is having an online event program called The Wonderful World of coyotes. It's a webinar hosted by uh, Nevada Department of Wildlife. Coyotes live around the state of Nevada and provide some essential services that help both humans and other animals in their habitats. Um, so you, you'll be learning their, the biology and ways to live with the animals in your backyard. There's a friendship line group conference line that um, let's many people talk on the phone together at once. The line is open Friday, Monday, th Monday through Fridays, excuse me, during the program hours, which is 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., monitored by the staff of, of the ARC. Participants will always hear a friendly voice. The number, this friendship line number is 415-480-1057. Four one five four eight zero one zero nine seven. One last thing I'd like to uh, add to about the Arc Hub. August eleventh, they are having a Sunshine Ordinance meeting by Zoom. They are looking for new board members. History of what started as a dream over sixty years ago is now a life-changing learning and achievement cent. Um, the meeting, well, the meeting will be held on Zoom. Um, November 10th, there's supposed to be another one where it'll be physically at the ARC at 1500 and Howard Street, but we'll, you know, see how things go as far as it goes with um, the pandemic, if people are still told to stay home. Um, 
anyhow, that is it for the cultural report and thank you. Thank you, Stacy. I'd actually like to add in a couple of uh, additional uh, sin related events, which don't actually yeah, have a fixed please. date yet, but they're, they're forthcoming. Um, a little background on this. Um, we found that a number of our community members feel particularly isolated during this difficult time. And so what we've decided to do to try and help them, uh, even in this time of social dis distancing, is to allow uh, them to socialize virtually. So what we're planning to do is what we're calling a virtual ice cream uh, social. Yeah. What we're going to be doing it will be via Zoom, probably on a Saturday afternoon within a few weeks. Uh, people will be able to log in, make themselves visible if they wish, and uh, socialize probably via chat since it is hard to have a bunch of people uh, talking at once on Zoom. Uh, if you are interested in that, wherever you may be, uh, go to info, at I-N-F-O, at ascend.org. And we spell our organization A, A, S as in Sam, C as in Charlie, E as in Echo, N as in November, D as in Delta.org. That's info at ascend.org. And we'll find out, uh, you can find out more about that. The second thing we're planning is uh, we've also found, actually, we already knew it that uh, a pretty fair number of our community members are very talented uh, musically and artistically. So we're thinking of putting together what's for want of a better term is a Sands Got Talent. And if someone has, is able to like our very fine cultural uh, correspondent, Stacy Kennedy, who else is a beautiful voice or uh, another musical attribute, or either vocal or non-vocal, and you're interested in uh, submitting, uh, you know, a little video a clip of what you do, uh, then we'd be very interested in going for it. And there are more details on that to follow. Again, if you're interested in either the virtual ice cream social and or the Ascend's Got Talent, go to info at ascend.org. So I think that's about it for us this week, folks. Will, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yes, um, I, I, I would encourage everyone to participate in as many of our, event, of our Zoom events as possible. Um, hope everyone is finding a way to, to keep themselves in, safe or entertained during this crisis. I know it's been going on a long time, but, but, but we'll get through this, but things will get better. And, 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 and hope you, you check out our show before, dur during and, and after the crisis. Until next week, rather, until next time, I'm your co-host Keith Halperin. I I'm, I'm your co-host Will Burnick. And I'm your book correspondent, Jennifer Brooks. I'm the cultural correspondent, Stacey Kennedy. I'm your guest, Krista Preston. And I'm your guest, Eric Harvey. Thank you both again. And everybody, until next time, stay well and stay safe.